Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 28th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Remember that Bird of Prey Days 2023 is happening this weekend at Braddock Bay Park, and I'll go into more detail about it at the end of the video. I started out at the Braddock Bay East Spit this morning at sunrise with a few friends, and there was actually a bit of sunshine in the morning, and we got some rainy weather coming up, so it was nice to enjoy that last little bit of sun. The highlight of the morning was a group of six common terns, and common terns are smaller than the Caspian terns that we see daily, and they have long forked tails, they're kind of uh, grayish on top, and also the underside of the body is gray. They're very similar to Forster's tern, but Forster's tern would have whiter outer primaries and also be white underneath rather than gray, among other small differences. Here we have a Caspian tern, so we notice that it has a forked tail, but it's not the one with long streamers like we saw in the common tern, and also the bill is just really big and thick. And here's the top side of the same Caspian tern, and Caspian terns are the largest tern in the world, so quite a significant bird. And here's a male red-winged blackbird coming at us, really showing off those red shoulders. I took a walk out to the end of the boardwalk when I got to Braddock Bay Park, and you can see it was still a pretty nice morning. But as the day went on, it became cloudier, starting with a thin layer of clouds, and then the clouds thickened throughout the day. The wind started out in a mostly easterly direction, and we're shifting around to the southeast. And that combination of cloudy skies and southeast winds is something we don't get very often, so I was interested to see how we would do today. We had several small to medium sized groups of blue jays migrating past today. Here's a bald eagle that's not quite a full adult yet. You can still see some dark in the head and in the tail and also a few white specks on the body and the wings. Compare that to this bald eagle, which is a full adult. We see that there's no black specks at all in the white head and tail and uh, no white markings at all on the underside of the body and wings. The local Cooper's Hawk had a lot of fun chasing off turkey vultures today. Anytime a vulture flies into the Cooper's Hawk territory, it chases it away. So it was really entertaining. And at one point, uh, it was chasing one right out in front of us in really good morning light. So I got some really good photos. For the Cooper's Hawk, notice that flying cross shape with a really big head and kind of straight wings and long tail. And the turkey vulture was really having to flap to try to get away. And here's one more look at that adult Cooper's Hawk. You see the orange barring underneath that the adults show. Also notice that the outer tail feathers, which fold underneath, are shorter than the central tail feathers, so it gives the tail tip a bit of a rounded appearance. Yesterday we had the first common gallinule of the season, and either the same one or a different one was around again today. So notice that red bill compared to the white bill that American Coots show. This osprey gave us a pretty good look and notice that it has a fairly strong necklace and it's usually the females that have the stronger necklace though it's not 100% reliable. This large white wading bird is a great egret. Those southeasterly winds are a headwind for the birds that are migrating and it was a pretty gloomy day so I figured that one of the more numerous migrants of the day would be sharp shinned hawks which it was. So here we have an adult sharp shinned hawk you can see a relatively small head long tail with a really squared off tip. The adults have this orange barring underneath and we see that this bird has a full crop which is this bulge here which indicates that it has eaten recently. Here's the top side of a female American kestrel. You can see those really pointed wings that kestrels show because they're falcons and the females have this kind of orangish brown mixed with black top side. And here's the underside of the same female kestrel. And also notice that facial pattern is pretty distinctive for kestrels. Here's another small raptor with a small head and squared off tail and orange barring underneath. So this is an adult sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a rather large bird. We can see that it has really pointed wing tips leading us to suspect that this is a falcon. We see kind of a clean upper breast but then a lot of blue barring underneath and kind of a helmeted look with the mustache coming down. So this is an adult peregrine falcon. And here's the top side of the same peregrine falcon, and it gave us a fairly close look, obviously. It uh, came across the field to our left, down really low. 
Here we have two different birds. So the bird on the left is a crow, probably an American crow, carrying some kind of guts in its bill. And chasing it here on the right is a common grackle. You notice that really long tail that the grackle has. Here we have another small raptor, and we can see that really squared off tail tip. It's hard to judge the size of the head, but the eye looks relatively big compared to the head, giving it a slightly cute appearance. And the underside is kind of a blobby brown uh, streaking. And those put together make this a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here's a bird where we can see very pointed wingtips. So we know it's a falcon. Um, from the way it flew, we'd know it's one of the smaller falcons. And we can see that the underside maybe looks slightly um, brownish or orangish. It's hard to tell because of the photo quality. And we can make out a bit of the facial pattern. We also see this string of pearls appearance to the trailing edge of the wing and a kind of skinny long tail. So all of those field marks together make this an American kestrel. We had one sandhill crane today and it was a rather reddish individual, which I guess is their breeding plumage. Here we have a group of ducks and we can see rather large bills and kind of a distinctive upper side where it's got this kind of bluish color patch on the wings of the males and this uh, distinctive appearance where you have these kind of white stripes. So these are northern shovelers. Here's another small raptor, very similar to one we looked at a minute ago with a small head, squared off tail tip, and uh, brown streaking underneath. So this is another juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. I heard the call of this bird coming before I spotted it. This is an evening grosbeak, and actually there were two of them. Uh, grosbeaks are large finches, they're yellow with white wing patches and uh, something that's a little more uncommon to see at the Hawk Watch. So uh, always a, a fun and exciting species to see. And here you can see a bit of the upper wing of the same evening grosbeak. And here is the male where the white patches are just here in the secondaries of the wing. If we look at this raptor, we see really pointed wings. So we should be thinking falcon. We see that it has some vertical streaking underneath if the bird was perched up in front of us. We see that the tail feathers are all barred. There's no orange ones. And uh, we see that distinctive facial pattern. So this is an American kestrel and it's a female. And towards the end of the day, the Cooper's hawk was still chasing turkey vultures around. And we had a nice male wood duck fly by at the end of the day as well. Taking a look at the eBird checklists, in the morning we had 53 species at the East Spit. And at Braddock Bay Park today I had 62 species. If we take a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 130 turkey vultures, 5 osprey, 8 bald eagles, 16 northern harriers, 61 sharp-shinned hawks, no migrating Cooper's hawks, just the local harassing the vultures, we had no migrating beautios at all, though we did see a couple of red tails that popped up at one point. And we had all three falcons with nine kestrels, one merlin, and one peregrine falcon for a total of 231 migrants today. That brings the April total to 27,348 and the season total to 36,520. There were no new species for the season today. And in fact, the songbird activity was really low in the morning. Uh, not really any warblers around except for a few palm warblers. And before we take a look at the forecast, let's talk about Bird of Prey Days 2023, which actually started this evening, Friday evening, April 28th, and will run the full day for April 29th and 30th, so Saturday and Sunday. So I hope you can come out and join us just to briefly cover some of the things that are going on. Taking a look at tomorrow, Saturday, April 29th at 10 a.m., there's a presentation, Awesome Ospreys. At 10.30, we have Hawk Watch Bingo. At 11 a.m., there's a presentation about owl migration at Braddock Bay. At noon, we have a kid's craft session, an owl mask workshop. At 1 o'clock, we have a talk on the wild side with live raptor program. Meet six different species of raptors up close and personal. And at 2.30, there's an owl pellet dissection workshop. And of course, I'll be out at the Hawk Watch both days as long as it's not raining too hard. And there will be live raptors that you can meet from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on both days as well. Note that there is a $5 suggested donation for adults, but kids are free. And that activities below take place at the Lodge at Braddock Bay Park, 199 East Manitou Road. And seating is limited and cannot be guaranteed. And there's some 
uh, programs that you need to make reservations for. So be sure to check that out. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with occasional light rain, mainly in the morning. High in the mid to upper 50s, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So that's a fairly strong southeasterly wind, which is a weird wind direction for us since it's a headwind for the birds. But we can sometimes still get um, migrating sharp shinned hawks and kestrels and even other species. It just depends on the other weather conditions. It's the same wind direction that we had today, especially in the afternoon. It's a southerly wind as we're coming into the end of April, beginning of May. So this is really getting into peak migration time for uh, songbirds and a lot of non-raptors. So it could be some interesting things that show up. Um, southerly winds combined with rain can sometimes get the birds migrating and then knock them down. So it could be an interesting day. For raptor migration, not sure how much to expect, especially with that rain in the morning. Um, might not get too much once the rain clears out. Maybe we'll get some migration, but it's a relatively strong wind. But it does have a southerly component to bring the birds up to the lake shore. So we'll have to see what happens. And I hope you can come out and visit us as part of the Braddock Bay Raptor Research Bird of Prey Days 2023. For Sunday, it's looking cloudy with periods of rain, high around 57. Winds east-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So I would expect minimal migration just because it looks like there will be a lot of rain most of the day on Sunday. And for Monday, it's looking cloudy with showers, high only 51, but winds are out of the southwest, our best direction, at 10 to 20 miles per hour, which is a really good speed. So definitely a day to keep an eye on, and it could be a big flight as long as it's not too gloomy and rainy. So definitely keep an eye on Monday, and Tuesday is looking decent as well. All right, well, it wasn't the biggest day ever, but I think we got some nice looks at birds and a few interesting things. And I'll put the links in the description so you can check out more about Bird of Prey Days 2023. And again, I hope you come out and join us here at Braddock Bay Park. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.